Good morning. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for the resurrection of your son. God, it is why we gather here. This is the message. God, help us to, um, help me, God, to preach um, the words that you want. God, we pray all this in your name. Amen. 36 years. 36 years, and this is my first sunrise service ever. So this is pretty awesome, being able to preach my first sunrise service. Amen. I kind of like this. You know, I'm not a morning person. My whole family, we're not morning people. This is really nice. I didn't know it was this beautiful when the sun was on. <laughs> I would imagine, though, that this was kind of similar to the morning when the two Marys went out to the tomb from our reading from Matthew quiet as they came to the tomb, not really knowing why they were going to the tomb, but knowing that they had to be there. They had to be close to where Jesus was. And as they're standing there, all of a sudden, a great earthquake comes, and, the angel, and an angel appears like lightning, and this angel rolls away the stone. And the two guards that are standing there, these brave guys with their weapons who are standing there guarding the tomb of Jesus, are so scared that they pass out. The translation of two says they were scared to death, but not the women. The women stand there, and the first words out of the angel's mouth is, don't be afraid. Or, it says, or as it says in the message translation, and I just love the message translation of Matthew, of this section in particular, it says, there is nothing to fear here. He was raised just as he said, come and look where he is, was placed. Now get on your way quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. That's the message. I love the way verse 10 ends. That's the message. That's the message, right? That's why we're here this morning. That's the message that he has risen. I love that translation. Today, around the world, from the Vatican in Rome to the underground churches, from the Episcopal Church to the Free Will Baptist churches, from churches of 50 to churches of 50,000 people, and from lifelong Lutherans to baby Christians to agnostics, to pe there are people hearing those exact words. This is the message. He has risen. One of the reasons that I love this gospel story from Matthew, that is my favorite one, is because the women show up to the tomb and we don't really know why exactly they're there. In other translations it says, you know, they've come to prepare the body. But in this one, we don't really know. The, the translation I was working with, it says they came to keep a vigil. But why are they there? What are they looking for? What are they hoping to see? Do they just want to be close to their teacher? Did they really know why they had come? What are they hoping to find? That's right. Thank you, Katie. They're hoping to find Jesus. Whatever the reason that they are there, I'm sure they did not expect the earthquake. I'm sure they did not expect the angel to come down from the clouds and to be and to come down in lightning. I'm sure they didn't expect any of that. And those words, I love those words of the angels. There is nothing to fear here. The angels tell Mary and Mary to go and give the good news of the resurrection to the apostles. I love the faithfulness of the women from our story. They didn't debate. They didn't raise their hand and go, how are we going to do this? Why, why are you here? Where is Jesus? They simply get up full of wonder and joy. And they go to give the good news of the resurrection because that's the message. He has risen. I've got a few of those. So I have this huge fear of heights. I have this huge fear of heights, but it's a very specific fear of heights. I can be in a plane and I'm fine. I can be in a building and I'm fine. But if I'm stepping out over the edge of something, cold, sweaty palms, I get nervous, I get dizzy. So a consequence, I learned to swim at two years old, but I didn't learn to go off the high dive until I was 10. And I remember that day very specifically, and my friend was daring me, they were egging me on, they said, come on, Zurich, you can do it, get up there, get up there. So I finally made the trek up the high dive once, and I peeked over and I went back down. And then I went back up, and I took two steps out, and I looked down, and I went back down. I did this five or six times. And then finally, the last time, I got up there, and I took a step forward, took a step back, and I waited, and I took a step forward. And finally, after about five minutes, just before the pool was about to close, I stepped on the edge, and I looked over, and I thought, no way, man. There's no way I'm jumping off. 
And I turned around and there's my best friend, Charlie. He says, there's no way you're going down this ladder. And he pushed me off the ladder. And I've been going off high dives ever since. You know, far too often though, that's what my faith looks like. That's what my faith walk looks like. Two steps forward, two steps back. God's calling me to go here. I'm going, no, wait, I don't know if I want to go. Two steps forward, two steps back. I so want to be like those women, though. I so want to have the joy and excitement and trust that Mary and the other Mary did. And to simply go, run, and share the good news with the world. Share the good news that he has, written because, that he has risen because that is the message. And because of the trust and the faithfulness of these women, as they're running to go tell the apostles the good news, there's Jesus along the way. Don't you love that, that Jesus appears? The angels say, hey, you're going to see him in Galilee. So as they're running to go tell the apostles, Jesus shows up. And he's so smooth about it, isn't he? He doesn't come like the angels is. He doesn't come with trumpets. He simply says, greetings. So it's like, hey, how you doing? There's Jesus along the road. And the women see him and they fall on his feet and they worship him. And I'm sure that those women at that moment would have stayed at the feet of Jesus forever and worshipped him the rest of their lives and would have been absolutely, ha perfectly happy doing that. But Jesus, does, but Jesus doesn't let them. Jesus says, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that I'm going to Galilee and I will see them there. Jesus says, hey, don't stay here. Get up. Go. Run. Go tell my disciples. You know, the number one answer when I ask people, why don't you share your faith more? Why don't you talk about Jesus more? The number one answer that I get is fear. Fear they don't know enough. Fear they'll say the wrong thing. Fear they might offend somebody. And I struggle with these things too. But I'm so encouraged from the gospel lesson today from Matthew that tells us exactly what to say. He has risen. That's the message. That's the message. He has risen. <laughs> have no fear that is the message so go as the angel commanded go as Jesus commanded share that Jesus is risen and do not be afraid Jesus at the end of Matthew says I am with you always to the end of the age so he's with us every single step of the way every single step forward every step backward and maybe he doesn't push us off the high dive but he encourages us along to keep moving forward and to share that message that he is risen. One of my favorite pastors, one of the pastors that I follow, put up on Twitter just this morning, and I, I really liked this quote. He says this, he says, uh, he says, the only thing Jesus has ever abandoned is an empty tomb. Isn't that great? The only thing Jesus has ever abandoned is the empty tomb. You know what that means? It means no matter where we go, he is with us every single step of the way. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He died and has been risen for you, for me, and for the world. Because, you know, there are so many people, like those women at the start of our story today, there are so many people standing at the tomb waiting for something. Maybe they don't know exactly what it is that they're waiting for. Not knowing what to expect. Waiting, though, to hear the message from you and from me that he has risen. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and know that Jesus is with us always. He has risen. He is risen indeed. Let's proclaim that. I know we're not supposed to. We've got people that are over here and people over here and people behind us. Let's proclaim that with one loud voice. He has risen. He has risen.